Hi. Hi. I hope God is taking care of all of you. Greetings from all of us here at Sterling. We are safe. I hope you all are safe too. See you in church. Welcome to Destiny Church at Home. We are moving towards Jesus and making disciples that will be fearless influencers of society. If it's your first time with us, we're so glad that you're here. Please be part of our WhatsApp community. We'd love to get you into a connect group. We believe that actually uh, life's not going to go back to normal, especially not with regards to church community. Um, we're going to have to learn how to do that online. And so we'd love you to be part of a, a connect group. Uh, some of our connect groups have met during the course of this week using um, social media and Zoom and all that sort of thing. And actually, while we're talking about Zoom, we would love to connect with you after the service. So the way we're going to try and do this is using Zoom. The meeting ID is coming up on your screen and uh, we would just love to chat to you, whoever you are. Uh, if it's your first time with us, we'd love to connect with you. If you have any questions, you'd like someone to pray with you or you just want to talk, we would love to meet with you afterwards using Zoom. So straight at the end of the service, uh, you can join, join that Zoom meeting and uh, some of our team will be there and we'd love to connect with you. So, so glad that you're with us today. If you're a parent, we have great kids church resources posted on our website and make sure that you're intentional somehow about developing spirituality in your children. So the same curriculum that we've always been using is online and you'll get that on our website www.destiny-church.co.za. We're in a series called Doctrine, Laying Foundations. And we are building the foundational things in our lives so that we can build our lives strong in such a way that they're effective here and that they last for eternity. And I wanna talk about a particular subject today. Um, and I wanna introduce it like this. The thing that we're gonna talk about today is the reason it, it, it comes from this sense that something is wrong with the world. Have you ever just thought about the world and said, you know, something is just deeply wrong with the world. In spite of all the good stuff and the beauty and the arts and the amazing things that, that human beings do and our strength and goodness, something seems to be wrong in all of it. The, the sense of peace and order is disrupted. This thing is the reason that you are shocked about people. The reason that you, 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 you say things like, Wow, I never expected that person to do that. I expected more from that person. It's also something that appears in some of the most successful and admirable moral people in our lifetime. You know, you don't need to go long through the news or live long on the earth until someone who you really look up to badly just lets you down somehow and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't think that they would do that. You find that someone has a dark secret, something hidden in the closet, and you go, wow, I didn't think they would do that. This is also the reason that, that you and I feel dragged into stuff sometimes. You go, you go I, I feel helpless about this. I, I know that it's wrong. I didn't want to do it, but I did it again. I'm sorry, I don't want to do it again. And then you find yourself going back to the same behavior. And this, this, this is not something that we can shake off. It like affects us at the deepest level of our identity. We, we even do some stuff sometimes and we go, who am I? I don't know if you've ever asked that question about yourself. And, and, and this thing is that we're talking about today is it even comes to us not just during the dark times and the valleys, but it comes at the highest moments of our achievement. And we find dark things happen in our hearts like we go, Ah, I'm, ah, I'm, so, I'm so amazing, I'm better than other people. It also just explains why in our world it's so difficult to do the right thing and it's so easy to do the wrong thing. It's the reason that we have courses at university called ethics and philosophy. The thing that we are talking about is the thing that makes our world broken and it's the thing that made the devil the devil. It is called sin and sin expressing itself through pride. And so we're gonna talk about the fall of man, Genesis chapter 
3. And I'm going to start with the intro in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9. And I want to talk to you about sin. I want to talk to you about uh, the devil. It sounds really depressing, but I'm going to use it to encourage you. And I'm going to use it to inspire you. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9. It says that God up front gave mankind a choice. God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for fruit. In the middle of the garden with a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God in his act of creation gave mankind a choice. There's these two choices. Are we going to trust and obey God or are we going to trust and obey ourselves? And 2.15 says you're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And we read at the end of chapter 2 that Adam and his wife, having been blessed by God, living in this garden together, they receive this incredible joy from God, blessing from God. And it says Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. And then enter the devil. And if I was making a movie, we need some dark music. Bum, bum, bum. Genesis chapter 3 needs this ominous music to come in and we see the devil appearing in the form of this this serpent and again if you're new to reading genesis remember that we're not talking about a a a literal description of everything that's going on but but the author inspired by the holy spirit showing us how we got to be where we are so the, the 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 devil manifesting as the serpent verse 3 of chapter 3 the devil was more, the serpent rather, was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the, the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And then more ominous music and maybe a clap of lightning. The eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. And the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to man where are you he answered i heard you in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked so i hid and god said who told you that you were naked have you eaten from that tree that i commanded you not to eat from the man said the woman that you put here with me she gave me some of the fruit from the tree and i ate it then the lord god said to the woman what is this that you have done and the woman pointed at the serpent and said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the snake and the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. The result of this moment of rebellion, of mistrust in God, of of sin, is that our relationship with God breaks down and we hide from him. And we have to have these complicated things called religion to try and get back to him and We try all sorts of things that don't work. Our relationship with ourselves breaks down. We see Adam and Eve experiencing shame, so our psychology gets broken. Their relationship with one another breaks down. And and the curse that is pronounced at the end of chapter 3 says stuff like, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. And so the relationships are not loving and serving anymore. They, 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 They break and they're painful. Even our relationship So the creation is broken and creation itself is broken. And we see in chapter three, God saying, cursed is the ground because of you. Earthquakes and tsunamis. The fact that our soil doesn't produce enough nutrients to grow our crops. The fact that life on our planet is not sustainable. 
anymore in many ways and even perhaps things like the coronavirus are all results of a broken world because of our sin us the pinnacle of god's creation fell and so introduce that curse not just to ourselves but also to the creation and so life and work becomes futile and the curse includes uh, that you you by the sweat of your brow you'll eat your food and 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 until you return to the ground for from dust for dust you are and from dust you will turn your life's going to be just fruitless and pointless and hard and eventually you're going to die and chapter 3 closes with these terrible verse words in verse 23 it says so the lord god banished him from the garden of eden to work the ground from which he had been taken terrible now again very sad and the author just describes it doesn't interpret it what do we learn from this let's let's talk about the devil for a minute because if we understand who he is and how he became the devil, and we understand what he's doing in tempting Adam and Eve in this passage, then we can understand how we can resist him and how we can triumph. First of all, the devil is a created being. He's not an equal and opposite force to God. And he was glorious. We see in Ezekiel 38, um, describing him in verse 12 as being the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. The passage goes on to describe his glory. Many people have said, well, he was, might have been a musician because it mentions timbrels and harps. I don't think there's much of a case that can be made for that. But he was, he was glorious and he was beautiful, made uh, by God. But he became proud. We know this from verse 17 of the same chapter, Ezekiel 38. Your hearts became proud on account of, of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor so i threw you to the earth and made a spectacle of you before kings and so he rebelled taking a third of the angels with him and we read in revelation 12 um, of his war against god taking angels and rebelling against god it says war broke out in heaven in verse 7 michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. That great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. And even Jesus says that he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So Jesus was there in the Trinity and that battle happened. And so until this point, up until this point, he doesn't have any real power on earth. Uh, he, he has to deceive Adam and Eve in order to get power on earth. And so, and so he des I want you to listen very carefully to the language of the devil's heart because it's the same thing that deceived him that he is using to deceive Adam and Eve. Isaiah 14 and verse 12 is also another one of these pre-prophecies that speaks about the devil. And it says, you have fallen from heaven, morning star son of the dawn and you said in your heart i will ascend to the heavens i will raise my throne above the stars of god i will make myself like the most high amazing that you see the devil created with all of this glory satan with all of this glory and in his heart he he wants to be like god he wants more but he is and so um he, he's his temptation to adam and eve is exactly the same thing he's saying to to adam and eve and it's very interesting to see what happens he says um eve says oh no no we we're not allowed to eat from that tree because we'll we'll die god knows that he's withholding this and we trust him and the devil says no 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 i want to i want to question that i think god is keeping the good stuff for himself i think that actually he is stingy and selfish and he's not good and you can't trust him. This is what the devil is saying. And Eve reveals that, it's, that she, she latches onto that suspicion because uh, she says, yeah, he said we can't eat from it and we can't touch it. The original doesn't say that, that, that you can't touch it, but Eve reveals that she's like, yeah, maybe is God, uh, maybe God is, is actually withholding on us. And so, so the devil tempts us in exactly the same way his pride causes that same temptation in us that, that we would exalt ourselves, try and make something of ourselves without God, 
try and be glorious without God. And so, you hear it said a lot that money is the root of all evil, which is a total misquotation of that scripture in Timothy. Actually, according to the scripture, what we learn here is that pride is the root of all evil. When we exalt ourselves, when we make a false sense of who we are, when we try and be something without God, we become dark and we participate in evil. And here's the thing. It's, 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 the devil is offering them something that they already have. He's saying, you're going to be amazing. And they are made amazing. You're going to, be, you're going to know these things. And, they, and, and actually, God has given it to them. He's made them in his image. Um, he's blessed them and he's made them in his image. So the devil is, uh, is really appealing to pride, not to anything that God is withholding. Okay, I want us to talk about four lies that the devil uses. Because if we can understand these lies... I think that it can help us to be free. So I want to invite you to think about these things and I just hope that they'll help you like they've helped me. Lie number one, I can be good without God. Lie number two, I'll be free when I make my own rules and my own truth. Lie number three, I can only find my true self within myself. Lie number four, I'll only be spiritually powerful when I trust in myself. And so these are things that we need to resist because the devil uses them to appeal to our pride and to lie to us. Lie number one. Let's talk about it. I can be good without God. You know, a lot of people believe that worship and spirituality is for weak or uneducated people. And that means that, that actually that person has a view of themselves that is, uh, is, is, is very high. They worship themselves. You know, I have very, someone was very close to me and what they used to say all the time is they were so depressed and so angry all the time and they used to say every day uh, when I would talk to them I, um, I'm too honest to be in business I'm just too honest to be in business what they're saying is actually other people are weak I'm actually really strong other people are immoral and I'm actually really moral and because um, we have this wrong belief about ourselves we can be good without God we get, we get angry you know I was confronted with this myself in my relationship with, with Vicky, my wife. And, uh, you know, I was having this, this coronavirus lockdown time has just really produced a lot of some dark things in me, some, some, some deep anxiety. I don't know if I'm the only one. I don't think so. Um, and um, I just, I was having such a tough day and Vicky was like, how are you? You look like you're struggling. And my response was, no, no I'm fine. And I just kind of locked myself in my my office and I carried on and, I, and then I realized actually this is totally 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 the wrong reaction I'm being I'm being so proud and so I sat down with her at supper and I just told her what I was struggling with I, I told that I told her how I was feeling um, and I told her all of the dark things that I was worried about and I said you know this is not just this is not just really what I believe but this is also what, I, what I'm, I'm feeling and um, you know it's amazing and I made that confession, I suddenly received so much strength from God. I, I received so much comfort and so much joy, and I was able to conquer even some of those dark doubts that I had about myself and about the world. And so, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pride inside of us. Me, it's, it sends us this message, you are a good person by yourself. You can be strong. Try harder. Other people are weak, but you are strong. Show them. And... You know, when you, when, when, you, when you show vulnerability, it really isn't weakness, is it? It's, it's actually strength. I wonder if uh, our struggle in South Africa with gender-based violence isn't because we've taught men to suppress weakness in themselves and, and to punish it in other people. So, I'm not weak. I'm strong. This pride, this insecurity. And then when you see it in other people, you punish. No, you're just weak. Are you even a man? And then we take that out on the women in our world. The truth is, the truth is, the truth is, we are we're not strong in our own strength. We're weak, we fail in, a, in millions of ways. We, we are sinful, we are fallen, and we need God. So if the devil can, lie, can get us to believe that we're strong people, he can keep us from God, and we start to, to power up on other people. Okay, line number two. I'll be free when I make my own rules and my own truth. 
it's been interesting just watching the shifts in the last sort of 20 years or so that in the way that people think and we've really come to believe that freedom is not being bound by any rules or any commitments freedom is is this I, this 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 liberty to just do whatever you want to do I'm, I'm wearing a wedding ring and um, I've worn it since the day that my wife Vicky gave it to me with the exception of time when I was actually very very skinny and this ring would fall off all the time so when I would go to public places I would I would take it I would take it off so that I didn't it didn't fall and I didn't lose it and I remember at one stage um, I was going to to the gym and my ring I would always take it off and um, there was this particular girl on duty who was always swiping us in at the gym with our cards and just something happened just a little flicker you know I noticed her she noticed me and then when we were honest I didn't think much of it and we just kind of had this thing and you know don't don't judge me right now don't look at me like that through the camera uh, and, 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 and we just had this connection and then um, I remember one day uh, I wasn't wearing my ring because it, 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 it was going to fall off and as she swiped me in she struck up a conversation with me and I thought oh this is a bad day for me not to be wearing my red wedding ring and you know how I escaped it was interesting I I actually happened to catch a glance of my hand and where the 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 sun had left a space there was no tan on my finger and I remembered that my wedding ring only sat there and this is a symbol um, it's a symbol of the, the incredible love and commitment that God had given to me through my wife Vicky it's a symbol of the blessing of God uh, that, that was given to me through these vows through this commitment that on the day that she put this ring on my finger and and so um, the picture of this, 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 the picture of my family came rushing in, and I realized, you know, this, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever been given, and I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. I want to live inside of the thing that God has given me, not take from outside of the thing that God has given me. And 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 so, so what I'm getting at here is desire, sex, love. It's all meant to live inside of this beautiful space called commitments. It has to have rules. It has to be contained somehow. Um, you know, and, and uh, another example that I thought of, I was, my, my sister and I um, were really blessed to grow up in a home where often there were presents. And this was a time when there was Christmas time, presents were put under, um, under a tree for Christmas Day, 25th of December. And these presents had been bought some time before and they were sitting under the tree and we would walk past them every day and I wonder what's that and you see your name on it and um, one day I remember um, we did something terrible we snuck in I think a couple of days before Christmas we were very small and we tore the presents apart and we opened them in the middle of the night without our, while our parents were asleep and, and we unpacked these toys and, and um, it felt so exciting you know at the time and I remember with horror, just like, once we'd got the presents out, we were like, oh no, this is terrible. This is, they, this is horrible. And, and it didn't matter how good the gifts were anymore. The fact that we had taken them for ourselves outside of the boundaries in which they were meant to be given to us by our parents meant that they were horrible to us. And we felt just like Adam and Eve, where we were like naked and ashamed and Oh no this is all ruined and that's you know that's what it's like every time you want to take something that God hasn't given to you every time you want to move outside of the rules the laws the principles of God you often go getting stuff that's good but the fact that you snatched it you took it for yourself you usurped it you grabbed it you you, you manipulated you you took something outside of the of the, the way that God was getting it wasn't a gift anymore it was it was something that you took in pride in, so it became so, so horrible to you. You know, this is why adultery is never satisfying in the long term, and relationships that begin in adultery seldom last. This is why pornography is, seems so exciting at the time, and so satisfying at the time, but it, it actually becomes less and less satisfying, and just gets, you have to use more and more to feel better about yourself, and, and it becomes darker and darker. You see, the thing, the thing is that we were always meant to live within the law 
the law of God. So freedom, freedom is not the liberty to take whatever we want, do whatever we want, make our own rules. That's, a, that's just another kind of slavery, slavery to ourselves. Freedom is the power to live within the law of God. Lie number three, I can discover who I am without God. You know, we've come to believe that um, like the purpose of life is to create an identity for ourselves, make an identity for ourselves. Now on the online world, you can really create yourself into whoever you want to be. And so we have this language. We, we, we say, nobody can restrict me. Don't hate me. Don't judge me. Nobody can tell me who I'm supposed to be. Only I can know who I'm excuse me, supposed to be. And, and so anything outside of us that that forces us into a mold, we say, that's oppression, that's injustice, that's oppression. Don't tell me who I'm supposed to be, I make who I'm supposed to be. And then any desires inside of us that, that uh, other people tell us are wrong or we feel are wrong, we, we call that oppression. Coming back to the pornography thing, I just think it's something that so many people struggle with. A um, friend of mine was really addicted to pornography and he went to see a psychologist and um, he was horrified because the psychologist said, no, 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 don't, don't fight that desire that's inside of you. That's, that's suppression. Don't suppress that. That's your, your true self. Just learn to manage that and let that come out. And, and he was so horrified. And, and so, so anything outside of us we call oppression. Anything inside of us that restricts us we call, we call suppression. And, and the thing is that we actually, we, we're becoming so lost <laughs> so so lost by trying to find ourselves within ourselves create ourselves from ourselves for ourselves about ourselves more and more pictures of ourselves making these internet identities these and these identities and whatever you want your identity to be you can make it for yourself no 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 we can't we can't be whoever we want to be we can only be the people that god has made us to be and and you know, uh, to be honest, during this time, I've really had to wrestle with, with, with my own identity and what makes me who I am. Um, like for example, right now, this is the worst kind of church experience for me because there's no one in my house. I've, I'm so used to being in church with all of you people and we sing and we hug and we laugh and we dance and we tell stories of, uh, of, of, of our failures and our victories and we, we baptize people and we eat together and we just, and we hang out in each other's and I just love that. And now it's horrible. All I have is this iPhone in my home. I have this pot plant. The plant never says amen. His name is Fred. I've even given him a name. He never says amen. See, there's nothing coming back. I brought somebody else to be part of my congregation today. This is Connie the Unicorn. At least I'm not alone in church in Jesus' name. And you know, honestly, I've had to say to myself, you know, who am I? Am I still a pastor? Am I still, a, am I still called to do this? Am I still, you know, who, who am I? Um, and I realized, wow, I'd really been making myself, trying to make an identity for myself based on all of these things that I had built, all these things that I was doing, all of these things that I was in control of. And having found those things stripped away, I can't tell you how free I feel. Just allowing God to remind me of what He has freely given me and surrendering to Him, humbling myself before Him and allowing Him to make me the person that, I, that, that, I, that I'm meant to be. You see, this is the thing. If, if the meaning of life is discover yourself, become your true self, there's so much pressure. How do you know who that person is? How do you know when you get there? How do you know it's right? What happens if you fail that person? And uh, what if you happens if you fail to, to be to be that person? Um, it's such a tyranny. It's such a it's such a slavery. It's such a horrible, oppressive way to live life, chasing that identity. But God, God makes us His children. God and God wants us to be His children. He wants us to be secure and to be to be loved by Him. And so, um, yeah, the lie that you can discover yourself without God, freedom is is. Freedom is, is not the, the liberty to just be whoever we want to be. It's the power to be who we ought to be. Line number four, you'll be powerful and in control without God. 
You know, one of the things that the devil hates is losing power. He wants power for himself. He won't share it with anyone else. And he wants to be in control without God. And that is the desire that he, he, he appeals to inside of us. And it's been so interesting to watch how people react to losing power during this coronavirus time. The economy has turned down. People's freedoms have been restricted. And it's, so, it's been so interesting to watch the historically privileged and powerful group of people react so darkly. You know, I've seen people who are Christians just have so much joy and peace and surrender and let God work in their lives. But I've seen a lot of people, a lot of people who, who, who grew up with privilege and power and they are freaking out. They are falling apart. They are angry. They are fighting. They're protesting, protesting about stupid stuff like, please, can we surf? You know, I have a whole, I have a whole protest about that. And, and you know, what, what I'm getting to is, and I don't want to make light of this, but privileged people should not be concerned that we're losing power, right? Because that power was never given to us by God in the first place. It was taken unjustly through years of injustice and, and a system of injustice. But you see, if you believe that you have rightly got everything and it's yours and you made it for yourself and you're like, I, I ate from the tree and I know, I know and I'm in charge and I'm in control and I'm, in, I'm powerful. And, 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 and then when that stuff's taken away, you've got to fight for it because it's not given to you by God. You built it for yourself. You know, I've, I just think that this time, it really tests everyone, you know. I watch other people who, you know, say, when, you, when you become rich, when God blesses you and you become wealthy, um, you don't get to say, look how smart I am, look how amazing I am, look how capable I am. You have to say, oh God, I have, thank you for giving this to me. You know, like Peter, when his boat is filled with fish, blessed by Jesus, he falls on his knees and he says, God, I'm a sinful man. Are you sure you want to trust me with this? Um, you know, the blessing of God is, is in, in, any, any material blessing, any material privilege, if you like, is meant to produce a deep sense of humility in us. Say, wow, God, why would you trust me with this power? Why would you trust me with this? Why would you give this to me? Lord, may I steward this well. Lord, may I be a good servant with it. Lord, may I use it for the glory of your name. And uh, I'm just commenting. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I'm just commenting on what's happening now. You know, as, as, as everybody is humbled, as, as power is stripped away from so many people who assume that they had a right to it, you know, life is testing us. And here's the thing. If you will face suffering with faith, believing that God is good and God is the one who gives you everything for life and your life is in God's hands and your purpose to worship God, if you face life with faith, you will experience humility. But if you face life with pride, you will experience humiliation. The choice is yours. You don't have control over what happens in the world, but, it, but you do have control over who you put in control of your life. And the devil wants you to put you on the throne and he wants God to serve you and you make yourself in your own image instead of letting God make you in, in his image. And he wants you to be in control and he wants you to think, that you're the really powerful, the powerful one. So, so how do we understand evil? This is, oh, I hope that those thoughts are helpful to you. Um, sometimes evil is really, it's really ugly. Sometimes evil is, is like demonic possession and people's hands are twisted and they're screaming and using other voices. And sometimes evil is really clean. And it's a guy who's just bought a fourth car and he's because he's so insecure and he wants everybody to 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 see his flash car and he's posting all over the internet about it and yet his grandmother is still living in a block house in the township and you know so so sometimes evil is not so easy to see but pride pride is the root of all evil so how do we fight this we fight this by doing what the scripture says the scripture Gives us it gives us just incredible, incredible, um, it, incredible uh, promises. It says in James chapter four and verse six to eight. 
Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, especially in an African context, I think our sort of um, ancestral worship spirituality has taught us that we can fight the devil without submitting to God. So it's all about fighting the devil. He says you can't fight the devil without submitting to God. You just humble yourself. The devil's got nothing on you. He can't use your pride against you. The worst you can do is chuck some demonic stuff around you through the world and through attacks coming around you. But that stuff will never get in you. You see, the, st- the, the devil can fight you from the outside as much as he wants. But the thing that will lose the battle is if he gets to fight you from the inside. And Christians can say, if I humble myself before God, the devil can never get me on the inside. And if he can't get me on the inside, nothing he can do will defeat me on the outside. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. 1 Peter chapter 5 says, God opposes the proud, shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You know, humility, the crazy thing about humility, it's, it's not something you can get good at, being humble. You just have to humble yourself before God. You have to say, God, I'm not in control of my life. God, I exist for your glory. God, I'll worship you no matter what. God, I'll follow you no matter what. God, I love you no matter what. God, I'm yours no matter what. God, I want everybody to see your glory in my life no matter what. And we have this no matter what at the end of all of our sentences. And we have to rely on him to be good and to give us what we really want in our hearts. Not to take it for ourselves. Not to make ourselves into something this picture of ourselves, this thing that we dream of or desire of to be, but allow God to give that to us as a gift. He will lift you up in due time, God's time. God is good and he's trustworthy. And this is what Adam and Eve failed to believe. They thought he was withholding from them. They thought the tree of knowledge of good and evil was this God keeping it all away, but actually it was It was really the fact that he wanted to show us things one at a time, wanted to show us things in his time. He wanted to be good to us in his time. I just want to say to you, maybe, maybe it helps somebody today just to know that you may have seen a lot of stuff that you were dreaming about taken from you during this time. You may have seen a lot of your dreams squashed and terrible things happen to you. And don't, don't force it. Don't try and take them. If you're in covenant with God, if you're a Christ follower, God is so good. You can trust him. Just allow him to be God. Allow him to give it to you in his time. He is good. Humble yourself and he will lift you up in due time. Okay, so number one, this is something we can always do. We just humble ourselves. Number two, help others to respond to this test with humility. We have such a great message, Christ followers, at this time. We, we get to tell people you can choose humility or humiliation. And the difference is faith. If you find that what you've built in your life is crumbling all around you and your sense of self-worth is crumbling with it and you feel like there's nothing that you can rely on, guess what? You've learned the biggest lesson in life. You are not God. God is God. You are not in control. You are not powerful. You are not glorious. God is, and only when you put your trust in Him, you humble yourself. Then He gives you His power and His glory. Then you can live with joy, but you're not holding it like this. You're holding it like that as a gift, open-handedly saying, thank you, God. And So we need to stay in touch with people. We need to help people interpret what's happening behind their pain. Number three, we need to work for justice for the poor and the vulnerable. Let us not waste this time where God is just just think about what Jesus said blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they'll be filled blessed are those who mourn for they'll be comforted you know I just think that people who are feeling a sense of dependence our whole world is feeling a sense of fresh dependence now we get close to God and God wants to draw near to people who are in need right now he he draws near to those who are in need those to those who whose spirits are crushed they get to know him in ways that 
we never can. And the devil's plan is to is for for everybody to fight and try and make themselves make themselves into something, and use that to crush the poor and to and to, to for people for the poor to be even further downtrodden. But actually, the Church of Jesus Christ, we need to we need to pray and we need to say, God, thank you. You know the need that I feel in my life. The need that I feel in my life is a reminder that God is, He, he only works with people that know need. He only works with, the, with people who, who know a sense of lack, who, with people who understand humility. And may, may this give us a deep, deep, deep sense of compassion for the poor, a transforming sense of compassion for the poor and the weak and the vulnerable and the disenfranchised. Destiny Church, I just want to tell you some stories as we bring this service to a close. You've, you've been so amazing through our Hope Vouchers project. You know, um, last week we got, to, we got to help someone who uh, was unemployed. They were actually at some point living on the street. They've now got a place to stay. Um, God's really helped them through people. And this person, someone in their family passed away. And they had to do one of these horrible funerals, 50 people, less than an hour, no food. And um, they reached out to us because they just didn't have money for some stuff. And because you're a generous church, we were able to bless them financially and just ease that and give them some dignity during that time. Um, There's someone else whose business is in distress and we were able, they, they haven't been able to pay three of their workers who've been hungry for a long time and we were able to send vouchers to them. And just give them enough food for two weeks and also begin to work with them and help them find out what their their coping mechanisms are how they can move forward uh, there was another man who's a foreign national who um, came into contact with someone in our congregation through some casual work and they were just struggling because as a as a Zimbabwean national they were not able to they're overlooked for food bags and overlooked for this and overlooked for that and they can't get through the, the system and and we were able to say, no, God hasn't overlooked you and we'll continue to walk with you and we'll continue to bless you. Come on, let's keep let's keep being Jesus' hands and feet. I I just think um, now, 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 church, we have the greatest opportunity to identify with the poor, to identify with weakness, with vulnerability. We're all feeling it. Let's remember that God is speaking to us. He's humbling us. He's trying to show us our true condition and he's trying to help us use that revelation to be part of a community that puts that right in the world. May you have a vision with your job, with your life, with your family, with everything that you do, even in your own struggles, that we're going to make a better world for everybody. In the name of Jesus, by preaching the gospel, by telling people about this Jesus by, by, by telling uh, everybody that, and I don't, this is such an amazing thing I saw in the scripture, Philippians chapter 2, um, what Jesus did for us. Uh, it says that he who was absolutely equal with God didn't hold on to that glory, but he put it aside and he made himself nothing and he humbled himself, even being obedient to the Father through death on the cross. Isn't it amazing? that the one who was glorious came into a world that was such a mess with pride and he saved it by humbling himself. Humility is the way that God came and undid the problem of sin that came from pride. You know that that God loved you so much he was willing to to be, be humbled and to put on flesh and to come into this world and he was willing to go to the cross and to take all your sin and be humiliated. He loves you that much and he's looking for you. If, you. if you're someone who needs a relationship with God and you've been watching this video, uh, you know, Genesis chapter three, the most important thing you'll remember from it is not that Adam and Eve ate from the tree and that the serpent was evil and deceived them. It's not that, that, that they were naked and afraid and ran and hid. I want you to remember one thing from Genesis chapter three, the, the voice of God saying, where are you? Genesis chapter 3 is not without hope. It is, it is God saying, I've come looking for you. God didn't have any trouble finding the two naked people in, in the garden. He, he, he was coming to, 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 to bring them home and to save them. And God is looking for you. If you're looking for God, man, he's been looking for you so long before you ever had an idea about looking for him. And, and he's gone to the cross. On the cross, 
He paid the price for our sin. He, he paid the price for everything that separates us from God. So we don't have to try and exalt ourselves and become something and lift ourselves up to God. No, we can just freely relate to God. Today, if you want to become God's child, I believe you can do it looking at your computer screen. Why? Because Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross. He was raised from the dead. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and He's with you in your lounge, in your office, in your home, in your bedroom by the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you to pray with us right now. Close your eyes. Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I, 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 I love you and I was made to love you and to follow you. And I'm sorry for trying to make something of myself, trying to be something in my own strength. I ask you uh, as I humble myself to save me, cleanse me from my sin and teach me how to live giving you glory with my whole life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we're so happy to have you with us. And um, we're just really glad that you're here. And we'd love to invite you to join us in the chat room after this. So the Zoom ID is coming up on the screen. Please connect with us using Zoom. We would love to hang out with you, just help you make progress in your faith. So giving is a big part of our worship and we need to keep being a generous church so that we can be a great church for this community. Keep doing it, Destiny. You're doing so well. Um, if you're not yet able to participate in giving, we have a few different ways. You can click uh, Church Online and go through to our website, www.destiny-church.co.za. There you'll find instructions for EFT giving. We also have Snap, Scan, and Zapper. And as an experiment, we're doing e-wallet. And you can e-wallet 060-644-0857. Anything that you mark hope, bags, or heart for the house will go to our project of feeding people, walking with people during this time. God bless you. Let's be a great church. See you for prayer on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Amen.